Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am your gracious co-host, Jay Stokes, joined by our other co-host this week. He is back, Mr. Jay Random. Yes, Jay yes, Random, yes. How are you doing, what's going on, everybody? Yes, sir. And you are tuned into Atypical Voices in our... <laughs> You're tuned into Atypical Voices in our time, a.k.a. Aviat, the official podcast of Chemistry Productions. Chemistry Productions, for those of you who don't know, is a company that focuses on media literacy. And Chemistry Productions is spelled K3MISTRY Productions. So, yes, yes. Let's get into it. Jay Random, how is your day today and what's been going on? <laughs> My day has been stressful at work, but you know, I stay busy, money keep coming in, so I'm okay. You know, I just need I just need like a week off, man. I gotta process a lot of stuff, but I'm good. How was your day? It was all right. It was all right. Uh, just I'm definitely slacking and getting the chemistry stuff <laughs> together. I remember I put up a I know it sounds like a broken record. Dude. That's like every week. <laughs> but I remember I put up a post on the chemistry production Tumblr blog, just saying how we're short staffed and we try and. <laughs> get things done in a timely manner, but it's definitely been difficult. I um, recently started a position as a writer for Medium.com, uh, writing articles on there to try and broadcast more of chemistry production services. All right. Yeah, so... Oh, well, let's listen, man, you're a busy man. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So let's get into the topic for today. The title of the show is called Missing the Point. And here we're basically talking about stories, scandals, what have you, in which people are missing the point, and we're going to get into that. So first off, we want to shout out um, Aretha Franklin and her family, a big rest in peace, sleep in peace, rest in power to Miss Aretha Franklin, a legendary soul singer. Uh, Random, yes, yes. What, do you have any thoughts about her? Like, have you grown up listening to her music and what have you? Well, you know, to be honest with you, I have not grown up listening to her music at all. But that doesn't mean I don't know or know, know anything about her, her powerful voice, uh, the impact um, that she has been on the black community, in all communities, not just the black community, all communities. Um, one thing I did realize, well, not realize, I found out after she passed away that uh, she um, gave Angela Davis, I think, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, $100,000. Yeah, she, she was... She was she was attempting to bail Angela Davis out of prison. Yes. Uh, Angela Davis, for Sorry, those of yes. you who don't know, yes, for those of you who don't know, Angela Davis is a uh, she was a Black Panther. Uh, Black Panther was a group started by Black individuals who are trying to resist police brutality, trying to fight the system that was harming Blacks during the 70s and the 80s, and they still exist today. And um, Angela Davis was one of them. She's still alive, and she's still very active in the political scene. Exactly. So, so you know, so, so that just finding that. that out, I wish... I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to cut you off. Say that again? No, you're fine. You're fine. No, you're fine. Oh, well, yeah. All that I was going to say was, I wish I had known uh, more about her, you know, because finding that out, I was like, wow. And, you know, in her in her reason for uh, um, trying to bail her, uh, Angela Davis out was she had... She she was saying something that a lot of artists don't say now, meaning she was saying, listen, I have this platform because of my community. So if I can right. help someone else in my community, I will. A lot of artists nowadays, they're cookie cutters. They're scared to lose their money. So they just be, you know, so, so they're silent. And it's sad because uh, a lot of things are going on nowadays, uh, you know, with, you know, if you turn the news every other day, you see the cops stopping black people, harassing black people, still killing black people. Um, right. And no one's really saying anything besides NBA players. And the sad part is, is like, what's up with these entertainers, like these rappers? Like, they're not saying anything. They're just collecting well, their money missing, and going about their business. They're selfish. They are. And pretty much they're missing the point, which is that your community elevates you so that you can represent exactly. them in a positive manner and help them out at the end of the day. Yeah, I agree. Totally you agree. Do, and you do, you do to a certain, you do to a certain extent owe your community when your community helps you get to a certain level in society. Yeah. And you also owe your community. I'm sorry. You owe your community 
to when you realize that you may be the cause of the problem, change it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And no one is stepping up to the plate. And just real quick, not to not to veer off Aretha Franklin, but um I listened to uh a radio show on um satellite radio. Um and the lady who hosts the show, her name is Karen Hunter. And she was saying that basically what she's doing now, she's cleaning out all her music catalog. So if you're not uh, for the people, if you're not uh, helping the people, then she's not going to play your music. If you're saying the N-word, she's not playing your music. If you disrespect the women, she's not playing your music. And she's going to lose a lot of music as a result. Well, you know what? But you know what, though? But she's a talk radio, so she doesn't really play a lot of music. But if she does play music... She's not going to play that type of music, and I was like, "Wow, you know what? She has a point." Yeah, no, no, I respect Uh it too. Because as much as I love music, sometimes you know it's kind of out there. But let's get back to Aretha Franklin. Yes, well, well, you actually um, raised it, but you you raised a good point though. You raised a good point though. Going back to the music thing, and this connects to Aretha Franklin too. The music that she made and the music that used to be out there back then, obviously you had some artists that were a little overboard, but for the most part, it was feel good music. And you really, you really had a positive message. Like the songs that Aretha was singing, for example, her most famous hit respect R E S P C T. It was, it was something that she even in her own interview said was meant to symbolize equality and respect no matter who you are, whether you're a child, whether you're an adult, exactly. whether you're a man, you're a woman, what have you. And uh, at, at a point in time, it was used as an anthem for the civil rights movement. And it was pretty much saying, respect me as a person, respect me as a human being. I know today there's a lot of newspapers saying it was a feminist anthem and they're trying to turn it into a gender thing. <laughs> but in Aretha's own words, it was not a gender thing. It was just ex- respect me as a human being. And that's exactly. all that is necessary. Th- that was feel good music. You had the Temptations singing good songs. And the thing is, the Earth music back then, fire. people, Earth went in fire. People catered to one another. Smokey Robinson, they all catered to one another, and they were all about trying to make each other feel good. Men were trying to woo women. Women were trying to woo we- uh, woo men and treat them uh, correctly. So it, it was a really it was a really good time for music. It was, it was. A really it, the the sixties, the seventies, the eighties. Obviously, you had your songs about cheating, you had your songs about infidelity, you had your songs about people doing bad. But for the most part, the music was great, and I think the music today is definitely missing the point. It's definitely not connecting with an audience in a positive manner. And I do think no, I totally that agree. There is, yeah, and I, I do think there's a connection between the music out today, especially hip hop music, and kids being hooked on drugs. What are your thoughts? Yes, of course, of course. You know what? I'm glad you said that because, I mean, <laughs> so it's this rapper out. His name is uh, Little Pump. I think he's Mexican. Oh, Lord. I know he's not black. And he got this song oh. called Drug Addict. And guess who's – no, you won't even guess. I'm not even going to play the guessing game with you. He has Charlie Sheen in the video with him. And they're both wow. in the same asylum popping pills. Yeah, the song's called Drug Addict. And I'm like – when had when when did it become okay to be a drug addict? When right that used to be and, 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 that should be and, shameful. Now it's like okay, I'm on drugs, advocate. I'm high, I'm addicted. But to play it's like, devil's whoa, advocate, calm down. to play devil's advocate though, there were songs that talked about drugs back in the day, like you had Rick James with Mary Jane, and you had. But the thing I liked about it is they coded it up, like it was codified. Coded. It wasn't just blatantly in your face. I'm doing drugs. You know? No, it was so coded. Like, if you listen to the lyrics to Mary Jane, you would have to know what Mary Jane was at first to know, oh, he's talking about how he's addicted to weed. But prior to that, you know, like you said again, it was coded. So you could play it on the radio before they realized, oh, wait, we can't play this. This is promoting drugs. You know? But, yeah, um, and you thought he was talking about a woman. Yeah, you really did. You really did. I mean, I'm playing the, I'm playing it back in my head right now, and I'm like, yeah, I listen to it right now. I'm thinking like, whoa, <laughs> if you ain't know any better, you think he's talking about a woman. You're right. Uh, nowadays, right. Um, these uh, entertainers they're reckless and they're selfish. So, um, yeah. one thing I want to mention about uh, Aretha Franklin, um, 
So I know, um, Jay Stokes, we haven't ever, I'm sorry, we never spoke about this, but um, me and your mother were talking one time, and I'm not sure if you have one, but everyone who's listening to the show, you can give us a call. Let me get out the number real quick. 646-668-8398. I know, sidebar. But the reason why <laughs> I mentioned your mother is because Aretha Franklin, she passed away without a will. Yeah. I don't know if you heard that. I did hear that. So, yes. Oh, so you did or you didn't? I did hear I'm that. I'm sorry, say that again? Okay, you did hear that. So, um, I'd like to say to anyone who's listening, please go and get a will. Um, because you never know when you're going to leave this earth. And if you leave this earth, earth with a lot of money like Aretha did, it's a problem. You know, well, so um, case, I just wanted. In her mm-hmm. case, it might be in her case. She lucked out because she has four sons, and they can split it because they're next of kin or they're 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 her heirs. Whereas you have artists like Prince, who it's a mess. Remember this: it's because we brothers. That don't mean I like you. So, <laughs> you know, I was mommy good. favorite. I was mommy favorite. I was mommy favorite. Before you know, everybody mommy's favorite, and now people pissed off because. <laughs> I don't think you should get half. I was with mommy the last two days. You, you know how money get. You know how money. I mean, not saying you as a you know, but we all know how money changed people. So I'm just That's saying, very true. or uh, so I'm just saying, definitely. Uh, when your mother gets back, I have to talk to her to talk to her lawyer friend because I have to get a will because if I should pass away right now, Sean Tane and I at the same time, which is my wife. I don't care. I threw out a real name, <laughs> not her last name. <laughs> if we should pass away but at the same time, though, you know. But is it her real up? name, though? But is it her real oh, name? You got a point. Dun, dun, her name, dun. her real name is Shawnee B. <laughs> but um, yes. Not to get off topic. Rest in peace to um Aretha Franklin and everybody. Go and get a will, because I'm telling you, it's it it could be a mess. On to the next. What else you want to talk about? Jay Stokes. Well, actually, well, actually, Aretha, the story about Aretha was going to lead into a story about Aretha was going to lead into something that happened recently uh, involving her, uh, which was the VMA performance, the VMAs, the VMA awards, and Madonna. So, Jay Random, can you brief the audience about what happened? Um, Madonna was supposed to give tribute to Aretha Franklin. And uh, <laughs> I guess she didn't get the memo because she talked all about herself because her, all about her reasoning, self. I'm sorry, what, what what happened? No, I said all about herself. She said herself. something. All about herself. And her reasoning was basically MTV told her to talk about how Aretha Franklin inspired her, but that wasn't the case. So I have a problem with that because no one cares about Mordana anymore. She's missing the point. She's missing the point. Huh? Even if no, that, she's yeah. missing the point. Even if even Big if time. the award said for said for her to talk about herself, just about Aretha Franklin. Aretha Franklin's legacy will surpass and outlive Madonna's ten times over. I don't remember Madonna, so there you go. <laughs> like I don't even know. Only song I know is like a virgin. Boom. Whoop whoop de do. Like a virgin. Like a virgin. And I remember there was a report, and and and, and not to disparage Madonna because she she at the end of the day, there are a lot of artists that are better than her out there. I'm just gonna frankly say it. there are a lot of artists that are better than her out there. They called her the queen of pop recently, and my thing is okay, she's a queen of pop. Who is she better at dancing than? Who who is she who? the best dancer? Is no, she she's the not dancer? the best dancer. She dances like a robot. Is she the best dancer? Now she dances like an old pro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. is, she, is she the best singer? Nope. Okay, so to Not be the a... queen of pop, sorry, I'm in a I'm in a hallway right now. To be the queen of tell. pop, the whole yeah, look, yeah, look, right? look, the whole the whole sound changed. <laughs> <laughs> to be the queen of pop, don't you think you should be? 
the best at something? Yo, I can't think of what she's good at. No lie, no disrespect to her. Because like you said, she put in that work, but I can't think of anything she's good at. I'm only, yo, as we're talking, I'm only thinking about that one song, Like a Virgin. Like a Virgin. That's bad. Oh, going on so, elevator. <laughs> yes, yes. So, just, just for those of you out there, I am traveling as I'm speaking on the radio show. That's called dedication. It's called dedication. It's called technology. Let's get it. So, um, yeah, so basically I have a problem with her taking taking the spotlight off of Aretha Franklin and uh, talking about herself. But, hey, whatever. She's uh, self-absorbed, so I'm not surprised. Definitely, and we're gonna and we're going to definitely pay tribute to Aretha Franklin in our own way on Chemistry Productions. So be on the lookout for videos and different posts coming out about her soon. But speaking of um, being arrogant and being self-absorbed, let's talk about Miss Nicki Minaj, the famous rapper uh, Miss Nicki Minaj. So basically, she famous. Nicki Minaj. Yeah, she's famous. She's very famous. She has a very loyal, dedicated fan base. Yeah, good job. with your Not really. Look at the album sales. (laughs) Album sales. That's true. So Nicki Minaj is a very notable, very well-liked hip-hop artist right now. And she recently released an album called Queen. And it was released at number two on the radio chart. And people... And and people thought it was a good accomplishment, but Nicki Minaj herself was very upset, and she started going on a rampage, blaming people like. Okay, so we lost. Okay, so we lost Jay Stokes. So basically, what he was going to say was, she started blaming people like uh, Travis Scott for uh, her um, not becoming number one. And, and and you may say to yourself, how could she blame Travis Scott? Well, this is how she blamed him. So Travis Scott, you know, you can't get mad at him because what he did was he basically um, tried to sell merchandise for people to go buy his album. Give me one second. I'm about to punch back in Jay Stokes. Yep. I'm back here. I'm right. back here. Live. Sorry, I had a phone right. failure. Had a, had no, that's cool. Failure. That's cool. Right, that's back. cool. <laughs> All right. So I was so, just filling him in on how – she was beefing now with um, Travis Scott and mad at Travis Scott for selling merchandise for him to be number one for the second week of her first right. week of number one. So you could jump in. Right. And the thing is, she's missing the point. She should just be happy that she got number two. Do you know how many people wish they could have the number two highest album in the country? And her last album, The Pink Print, also debuted at number two on the radio charts. So she oh, should she's be doing happy bad. with her success. Yeah, but she should be happy. Oh. She should be happy with her success. Wait a minute. She should be happy. Has she ever had a number one album? I doubt it, no. <laughs> I know she made a big deal about breaking, I think she broke Aretha's record in terms of the uh, the female with the most number one on the on the radio or something like, I mean, on the Billboard Hot 100. I don't know, it's something like that. But my thing is this. Be happy with your success because it can go overnight. And because of the rant rant that she has made, she might lose a lot of fans and a lot of endorsements as a result. Or not. Yeah, time will tell, right? Time will tell. I know one thing, it's definitely not increasing them out of themselves. It definitely isn't. And a lot of her fans are attacking the people that she's criticizing rather than trying to buy her album or to support it even more. And the thing is, it's like take that same energy that you're using to chastise and get on other people and use it to up your album. No, I agree. Totally agree. Waste of energy in life, man. Waste. We ain't here too long. Yeah. Don't waste that energy on stuff like that. And like you said, again, she should be happy that she's number two. Like, it's okay. It's okay. And and to top it off, for her to be like, I called Travis Scott and I told him, you know you're not number one. What? Like, what? Well, wait, calm yeah. Yo, if I was Travis, I would hung up on her, man. Like, yo, she on something. Yeah. Let me hang up with this bird. I mean, she acting like a bird. Hate, like, how, how, it's like, it's like, yo, how you a queen, but you acting like a peasant? Like, calm down. Wow. Numbers don't lie. That's the quote of the year. How are you a nah, queen, but real. you're acting like a peasant? Wow. Nah, seriously. No, seriously, That's numbers don't right lie. There. 
<laughs> that, so, that, um, that, that's real yeah. right there. <laughs> so speaking of people in high positions uh, okay. recently having downfalls, Let's look at the president of the United States, and I'm just going to go on the record and say it out there. Mean orange I think agent? that, oh, aka orange agent. Hopefully, he doesn't get this yeah. show canceled. So, <laughs> I'm, thinking, <laughs> I'm just going to go out and say it. I think a lot of the energy that people put into just slandering the president and hating on him, I'm just like, okay, you're doing that, but is that making you feel better? Because it's not really doing anything to him. He's still in that high position. So let's work on voting certain parties out of office if you do not like their policies instead of just blowing hot air and just yelling and being like, this isn't right. Okay, take that same energy and go to the polls and do it. Take that same energy. You know what, to be honest with you. Yes. No, no, I was going to say, to be honest with you, you're totally right. You know, all this – Rah rah rah! It's like stop wasting energy. Save that. Say, bring that same energy to the polls, but don't just bring it for the president election. Bring it for your uh, elective officials, because it all starts right. there. You know, because elected right. officials those those are the people that really affect you. You know, you know they affect That's a lot. True. What goes on in your, your your town, your city. So bring that energy. Don't just show up for the presidential election. Show up for all the elections. But all you know, right. anytime there's I'm sorry, say that again? No, I I'm saying you're exactly right. You're exactly right. Yeah. And the so, reason why nah, I brought it. up President the reason why I brought up President Trump is because recently his um what was it, his old attorney, Michael Cohen, is that that's what it was? Yes. That's what yeah. he Yeah. So his, his old, his old attorney, lawyer, lawyer, his old lawyer, Michael Cohen. So I got the hiccups. Um, he was recently what? What? He was convicted for um, yes. trying to hide information about Trump and trying to pay off women that he slept with during his run for the presidential candidacy or the presidential office. No, he was really convicted of. Uh, fraud his family has a yeah his family has a limo company and he he did a fraudulent um transaction i think he tried to say the company made like 20 million dollars one year so some tax type it's some tax fraud so that's the main thing they got him on yeah that's the main stuff they got him with the covering up yeah so what's up with the covering up um his um the trump scandals before beforehand what's up with that so that's part of it, but that's not the big thing. They really got them on like tax, like tax fraud, you know. Uh, so um, basically, with the the cover up, he's basically I, he's basically basically saying that he paid off, I think two women for for President Trump uh, affairs, and I'm not sure how that tied into him being. Uh, indicted and found guilty but i know the main uh guilty um charge was the tax fraud so okay. but um yeah i mean was all said and done uh a president that we have now he's not the first president that cheated but this is the thing i'm pretty sure it would have been an even playing field if everyone knew that he was cheating on his wife while she just had just gave birth to his kid and he was cheating on his wife before he became president. So, I mean, and he's cheating on, and, and the bad part is he's cheating on his wife with uh, women that some may say aren't really clean women. And for his uh, Christian based followers, I don't think that's a, you know, what you call a Christian woman. The, you no, know, the ladies that he's sleeping with. So, I mean, I, I wish you I came out, but. You know, a famous quote from our president was when he said, I could shoot someone on, I could shoot someone in New York and nothing would happen to me. And he didn't say New York exactly. I think he said Wall Street. And I was like, wow, this guy's saying this on the mic. Like, okay. So. Yeah. And I think the country is, or shall I say his supporters rather, are missing the point that 
we have a current president who is not for the people. And not everything for the people. that he has everything that he has done so far has been self absorbed. So even for his base, the base that voted him into office, he's not for you. He's not doing things for you. Get it in your head. And obviously Chemistry Productions, well, not obviously, but I'm going to put it out there. Chemistry Productions is a nonpartisan company, and we don't take sides. But we do speak facts, and we do shed light into what is going on in politics, whether it's Democrat, Republican, Independent, what have you. This current president that is sitting in office is not for the people. So those who think he is are missing the point. Missing the point. Really missing the point because he's really not for the people. And um, I think they're starting to realize he's not. But what can they do? They listen. Right. They're gonna have to ride that train until the wheels fall off because <laughs> no one likes egg in their face. But hey, real quick. So um, just to get off topic, our number once again six four six 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 eight eight three nine eight. So I just want to ask you, Jay Stokes, do you want to play a song? Because we have three minutes and thirty seconds and counting. Oh, no, no, no. It's all right. I'll, we'll we'll plug the cool. song on our other platforms a little later on because we got one more no story doubt, no to doubt. get through, and then we got the news about this blog on um, this podcast that we want to say at the end. So gotcha. um, the last story that I want to talk about just briefly, pretty much there were these students that were being bullied at their school in Newark, New Jersey, and it's called West Side High School, and these students – they were poor. They didn't have money to buy new clothes, so they had to recycle a lot of their clothes. A lot of times their clothes was dirty, and they were being bullied because of that. So as a result of this, the principal of that high school, he applied for a grant and ended up getting the money to install washing machines in the school. And now these students are able to uh, go to school and, and not be bullied and have clean clothes. And I think a lot of times people miss the point that when students are bullied in school and they are in a safe environment, it makes them more likely not to want to come to school. And education is very important for child success. I agree. Yeah, so that's pretty much that story. Um, but we have some news for you all out there. Jay Random, did you want to tell everybody the news regarding our, our um, podcast? Yeah, so basically uh, the news is starting next week, Thursday, we will now be airing at 8 o'clock. Wednesday. 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 What? Say Susan? <laughs> What's today? You said, you said Thursday. Wednesday. Wednesday. Thursday? Wednesday. My bad. Wednesday. Wednesday. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, so. Uh, <laughs> well, hey, listen, that's why, you know, roll that's out, why you're here. You're going to roll out a plan. You got to do the plan right. <laughs> You know what I was doing? No lie. I was looking at this piece of paper, and the, the paper had Thursday on there. Sorry about that. Random. So, uh, yeah, starting next week, Wednesday, we will be airing our show live at 8 o'clock. And uh, yes. it's going to be an hour. It, so, yes. So, you know, um, we're, starting to, I mean, we're starting early because we want to start getting, uh, you know, people to call in. And I'm pretty sure people – probably hear our show podcast style but they don't really hear it live because a lot of people are asleep so what we're going to do we're going to try to promote as much as possible to get people to listen to the show at eight o'clock so once again starting next week wednesday our show will be live at eight o'clock for an hour so we're going to bring it to you guys all right and uh, we're going to promote and uh, hopefully y'all call in with your, you know, with your thoughts. We take all calls, you know, good or bad. Just don't be silly because I may start laughing. I'm not going to lie. But, um, <laughs> Jay Stokes, we got 40 seconds left. So what you want to say? All right. Last but not least, just so you know, um, the parent company of this, pro- this, this broadcast is brought to you by Chemistry Productions. That's K3M-I-S-T-R-Y Productions. We have a Tumblr blog. We have a YouTube channel. Definitely follow that. We have things that we're going to roll out within the next weeks coming. So definitely follow us, uh, definitely look for us, and definitely stay tuned for great content in the near future. Yo, yo, everybody, thank you so much for listening. Next week, Wednesday, 8 o'clock, we out. Peace.